Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is checking the refrigerant charge on this R4 tonight outdoor condenser. This is an air conditioning only uh, outdoor unit, and we have already gone and checked the filter inside the house, made sure that the uh, fan was on, checked the airflow in the house, and now we turned cooling on. Uh, before I did that, I turned the disconnect off for the outdoor condenser because I always like to be out here when it turns on. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to have to let this system run for 5 to 10 minutes before we actually check the charge. You can attach your gauge set before or while it's running. So we're just going to go ahead and attach our gauge set now. If these valve caps right here are very tight, then you can use some type of pliers in order to get them off. You can use channel locks or whatever you need to. This type of valve right here that you see, it doesn't have an extended stem on it. It's going to end up having Schrader valves or valve cores inside. So there's a valve core right inside. If you press it in, refrigerant comes out. In the cap right here, it's a just a plastic one with a rubber insert inside. You just make sure you take both of these caps off. This side is the large line, which is the low side, and this blue gauge is the low side. So we're going to end up attaching our blue hose into the large line right here. I'm going to put a glove on here. You always want to make sure that this is pressed forward first. Line it up and you're going to start putting it on. Now I didn't I didn't turn it tight enough to start pressing in the Schrader valve yet um, and I already checked my gauges just so you know my handles, my hoses are all tight, everything is good. So we're just going to go ahead and, and push it in and So once again, our handles are tight, everything is good. We're going to press this forward. We're going to attach that fairly quickly. So we're going to go ahead and attach our temp probe onto the liquid line. The reason we're doing that is that we're checking the subcooling on this system due to the fact that this unit has a thermostatic expansion valve as a metering device at the indoor coil. So this is out of the sun, it's within a few inches of where you're taking your liquid pressure reading at. And we're going to go ahead and turn this unit on. This unit is R410i, right up here on the rating plate, it says R410i. So this says R410i and it says indoor TXV subcooling 10 degrees. And we confirm that there is actually a uh, TXV metering device on the inside. Just because this is on the rating plate does not mean that you're going to check the charge in subcooling. It's only if you have a thermostatic expansion valve. If you had a piston or a cap tubing, you would need to check the refrigerant charge with the superheat process. So we're going to go ahead and turn this system on and wait five to ten minutes. Units on. And now we're going to wait 5 to 10 minutes before checking the refrigerant charge. We're on Fahrenheit and we're checking the temperature on the liquid line. Alright, it's been about 8 minutes. We're going to go ahead and check the subcooling on this. We do that with the high side gauge. Okay, before we do that, we just check the vapor side. We make sure that the coil, which is this outer ring is the pressure, inner ring is temperature. We're working with R410A, so that's the late rose or pink inner ring. It says that the evaporator coil, which is the indoor coil, is above freezing. It's at 41 degrees right now, which is, that's, that's good. Now that we check that, we're going to go ahead and check our subcooling. And we see that we are reading about 238 PSIG. And the actual temperature on the middle of this condenser coil right here is 80 degrees. 80 degrees minus 67 degrees is 13 degrees of subcooling. Okay, so that is what we have, 13 degrees of subcooling. If you looked up on the rating plate, we said that we had a target of 10 degrees of subcooling. So that means it's just slightly overcharged and not in a bad way, in a good way. All right, it is uh, within three degrees plus or minus the target subcooling. And I would rather be having a little bit more subcooling than less subcooling, okay? Just because 
technicians will attach their gauge sets and, and detach, attach, detach. Every time they do that, they're stealing a little bit of refrigerant out of the system. I'm going to show you the disconnect procedure so that you don't take the liquid out of the refrigerant system. This refrigerant charge is good, so it's with 10 degree target subcooling, which would be anywhere from 7 degrees of subcooling to 13 degrees of subcooling, and we have 13 degrees of subcooling. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you the disconnect procedure. I'm going to first disconnect the temp probe and turn the multimeter off. So you know it is 68 degrees presently outside and you want it to be as close to 70 or higher as possible to do these preventative maintenance start and checks. You can get away with it at 65, it's just preferable uh, to be a higher temperature outside. So you know the past two days it's been about 85 and 87 degrees. So we had some weather come in and we're a little bit lower in temperature but the, the reality is the inside of the house is pretty darn warm and humid. Alright, so it's good for us to start and check this uh, air conditioning unit. Now that we disconnected the temp probe, we're going to shut this uh, manual low loss fitting right here in the off position and then we're going to go ahead and and then we're going to put this on the back of our gauge set. Now we're going to take the yellow line right here and we're going to turn that to the off position. Now we're going to connect these two parts of the gauge set. So this handle is shut right now and that's still reading the pressure on the low side. We're actually going to take the refrigerant that was in this line uh, along with the air and put it into the yellow line. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be purging the air out of this hose because this is all filled with air and this red line has some air in it as well. So we're going to go ahead and open this up which connects the red hose to the yellow hose and now we're going to purge any air out of the hose. The second it changes from a gas to a liquid, that's when you know uh, that you purged all the air out. Okay, because we had this connected to the liquid line and it was flowing full liquid refrigerant. So liquid refrigerant was applying pressure under this gauge and then we connected this hose to the yellow hose. We had to bring the liquid over to this yellow line and there was no chance for the liquid uh, to have flashed yet into a vapor so all that was air until you had the liquid come out. Alright so you need to do that so you don't put air into the outdoor unit. If you put air into the outdoor unit your head pressure is going to uh, rise and that will be put through the system and that will be extremely inefficient. So now we're going to go ahead and attach this back to the back of our gauge set and then we're going to purge the air out of uh, our blue line. I'm going to purge it here and here just because this quick charge cylinder doesn't allow for a whole lot to come out the back. So I'm just going to purge it here first. Okay. Then I'm going to purge that and we're going to screw that back in. What we're using this for right here is so that when we charge this liquid back into the low side, it actually helps flash the liquid into a gas before it goes into the suction line and that is going to have the refrigerant going directly into the compressor. So now, since I have this quick charge cylinder and I have this in the description below, uh, just in case you're, you're wondering uh, what it is, you want to do a little research on it or, or what have you, that is in the description below. I really like using these um, just because, for instance, right now I'm going to charge all of this refrigerant right back into the low side. I don't have to worry about liquid going right into the compressor and I can actually just open this handle up. If I did not have this quick charge cylinder, I'd be doing this. I'd be doing a little bit of this, waiting, coming back, a little bit more, because you don't want to have liquid going directly into the compressor. I'd be doing that. Right now, really all I, can, all I have to do is just do it like this and allow the manifold gauge set to do its thing. I use this quick charge cylinder for when I'm charging systems or when I'm doing the preventative maintenances to charge the liquid back into the system. <clears throat> the point of what we're doing right now is so that we don't steal 
refrigerant from the system when we disconnect. Now that you see that both gauges are equalized, basically they're the same pressure on both sides, now we're ready to disconnect the blue side. You want to disconnect the blue line before you shut the unit off because right now it's at a lower pressure. So it's best to disconnect it now than rather than later. Because if you disconnect later, what's going to happen is this side will equalize with this side and this pressure will be going up. So it's better to disconnect from this while it's lower than when it, what it normally would be with the system off. Now I'm going to check to make sure that these Schrader valves are not leaking. I've been coming across a lot of leaking valve core Schrader valves lately. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to just check these to make sure that you don't leak refrigerant out. And these little plastic caps don't seem to do it. All right, they, they don't seem to hold the refrigerant in, uh, nor should they. They're, they're pretty uh, cheap design. Uh, sometimes they may hold some in, sometimes they won't. I prefer the uh, brass ones, to be quite honest. So we're going to spray bubble leak detector in here. And we're going to see if we have any air bubbles that come out. I have that Micron bubble leak detector listed in the description below if you wanted to see what that is. Make sure that you don't use just soapy bubbles like dish detergent, that's, that's no good. My air compressor is set at about 40 PSI, so I'm going to go ahead and blow out the bubbly pepper. So that's all I'm using. Put the valve caps on and you're good to go. Now I'm just going to go ahead back inside and turn the temperature back down to where it was set at before I came and did this preventative maintenance check. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.